Okay, I'm attempting to assemble my Comet GP9 and one of the things that I couldn't figure out and the instructions are in Japanese English which kind of tells you nothing but they refer to attaching the elements with a, a set screw and what they don't tell you is that this element here way down inside this tube, okay? It was, and I mean way down, I couldn't reach it with, um, with my fingers or anything, I couldn't get into it. So, also on, it wasn't sticking out either. So, um, a friend of mine had actually done this before me, and he said, <laughs> his words, it's easy once you figure it out. So what he said to do was take a dowel or something and push the copper wire on this end down so that it pushes out this end. And then once you have it out, tie a string to it. And you'll see I just took a string from a feed bag that I had and I tied it to it because they're pretty strong. And then you're going to take it and push it literally back down again so that you can attach it to this and then put in a set screw. There's a little hole right in the end there, as you can see. And then you're going to put a set screw in there. Okay, so once you have that done, then you need the assembly to be pulled back up so that you can reach it to attach the middle element to the top element. And yeah, I know, kind of crazy, but that's the way it works. So um, I'll take you along as I'm going. Okay, and now that I've got the string in there, as you can see, can you see? I can attach the element on the other end, and it comes with, and you have to be careful. There's three little tiny set screws and an Allen wrench in there, okay? And you're going to attach the wire, the copper wire, into here, okay? So, let's see if we can actually do it. Oh. Let's see if I have enough space here to do it. Okay. Let me get this wire pulled out again. And see, now you can actually see the wire there only because I shoved it down with a pencil, okay? So I'm going to attach it. Maybe I can get this to stay while I do this. And there you see there's the wire. And it's going to go into... Sorry about that. And see, because you pulled the, the element out so far is why, and in it went. Okay, now, we're going to put in one of those little bitty set screws, hopefully. Hopefully, I'll be able to do this. Put the Allen wrench. And let's see. Sorry, for I know some people this will be like, well, duh, that's kind of, you know. But I said, I know there's more people than me out here that, whoops, sorry, fell over, that would have some confusion with this. So um, now there's two little holes in here. Let's see. And you will drop it in. And screw it in. Okay, now, there we go. Now, that's how you do that. Now, what we need to do is we need to be able to pull the other end out in order to be able to connect the top portion to it. Okay, 
and then so on and so forth. We'll do that with each piece. I'll take you along. Okay, on the very top element, you'll see there's the couple wire in there. That's the wire that you need. Yeah, can we see it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, we're going to take some needle nose pliers and we're going to pull that out so that we can attach it to the middle section, which I have tied string to on that end and on this end. This end will come off. Okay, once I pull out the wire from here, and I get this pulled out far enough so I can connect it, then we'll push it back down the other way. Okay? So let's see if we can do this here. Okay, and I don't know if you can see this, but I have the needle and those pliers in there, and I pulled that element out, okay? Now, I have the string here, and I'm pulling that out, okay? And I need to pull that out so I can put the set screw in. Now, I can take this string off, because it won't be necessary anymore because I put string on the opposite end also so that I can pull it back out. And what did I just do with my knife? Oh, there it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this string off of here because we don't need messy stuff hanging out. Okay, and there we go. Everything will be nice and neat. So I'm going to slide the top element up under here because if you need to be careful when you install this, I mean common sense. Um, but if you don't have enough uh, a large enough room or a long enough house that you can get this out once you assemble it, you might want to consider that. So I'm going to assemble two pieces inside. I hope you can see that now. And then I will do the third piece when I'm when I have it outside. I'm trying to get this to stay where you can see it. It'll be just a matter of time, okay? A few minutes at that point. Um, and be careful, these set screws are super tiny here. Okay. I am um, almost lost one at one point so we want to be careful there so I'm going to put them on this neon green that's why I'm using it because it's easy to see stuff with I hope you can see this okay I'm hoping that's pretty clear for you. I don't know. I have a hard time seeing it close distances, so what looks clear to me may not be clear to you. Okay. So hopefully that'll do it. Now you'll see, again, there's a place to put two set screws in here. And we're just going to connect it in there, just like that. Simple. Set screw one. and set screw two. They provide the set screws and the little Allen wrench which makes it pretty convenient. Now if they could provide a agile pair of hands that might help. It's not so much here. Okay. Okay, so just like that. There we go. Okay. And that's one. Now, 
was my little set screw right there. And we'll do two. Not like you really needed to watch doing the set screws, but. All right, so you get the gist of that part. Okay, so the two pieces, top and bottom, fiberglass elements, um, and wires are attached inside and then I screwed the exterior elements together and then you'll see I have the string hanging out the end here because when you pulled it up to the top and made it so that you could attach the two top element, the middle element and the top element, it's too far inside to attach the bottom element, thus the string. So there you go. Just pull it out pull it out far enough so that you are able to attach the bottom element with the set screws push it back in and we can remove the string when that's done again remember how tall this thing is so keep that in mind when you're putting it together it's probably best to do it outside I was just doing this portion inside because it happens to be like 100 degrees outside today anyway I'll show you the rest when we get there okay so final stage putting the bottom the last section into the top we can remove the string now so we really don't need it anymore right I'll pull that out real quick and we'll remove that and then just like the other section we're going to I've got the set screws already in there because I didn't want to lose them. So I'll loosen them real quick. You really have to be careful with those things because they are tiny. Okay, so that should be enough to allow me to. Maybe not. And there we go. You want to make sure it's in there right because you need a good connection. And then of course tighten your set screw. Okay, so once that's done, then you can just push it back in together, but I think what you're going to need to do, because it was kind of tight up here on the top, is to loosen this just a little bit so that when you push it back up, it doesn't ram it too far and kind of squish up your um, copper there, okay? So, we'll do that real quick. Okay. So, I loosened it a little up on the top where I showed you so that when I kind of pushed it up here on this section, now I'm just going to tighten in the ring. Okay. Got a little like rubber type gasket in there too. So kind of helps waterproof it, but I'll probably go ahead and add some water, you know, some of that tape stuff around it to help keep that moisture out just in case. And then I can come back down here and tighten that back up. Okay. So we'll do that. Before you put the coax on, make sure to put on the braces for the antenna because otherwise you'll have to undo everything. That way you'll have it on the antenna. You can leave it loose until you get it positioned where you need it and then you can tighten them up as you need to once you get it into position. Okay, So you'll just slide those on there and then tighten them up. So 
Make sure and get those on before you put on your coat packs or you'll have to go backwards and do it. On the conduit, I made sure and I got the RG8U and you'll see it's really thick it's got a and it's got a good thick shielding on it too so um, you don't want to skimp when it comes to your cable all right so we're just going to connect it in here which makes sense and we'll screw this then the last thing you're going to do is screw in the radials and there's little nuts on them so you'll see how far they need to go screw it in tight and then use a little tool and tighten it because you don't want it when the wind or something is moving around for them to come loose and you see they will come loose if you don't use a tool to tighten it so make sure get a tool and tighten that one of the things they recommend is to use some vinyl tape or some waterproofing tape around each of the joints so we use some vinyl electrical tape because it's flexible should work just fine. Um, the joints are actually inside, so I'm not sure why they tell you to do that, but um, the moisture, they said, can affect the standing wave ratio, so we took the precaution and did it. You mean, well, it's, yeah. I think you can eyeball that. Okay, so we had an existing dish arm. So the idea is, and we'll find out if this works, the idea is to attach the antenna to the existing dish arm, since we don't have dish anymore, but we still have a dish. We had a dish up on the roof still, which we don't need. So that's the plan. Here, I got the dish. You go down and get that. I know, but I'm... bracket that goes on, as you saw, it come, came with the Comet GP9, and then so does the, is that a U-bolt? Is that what you call that big old long thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Something like that. So, you'll see it's being, it's a UV bolt. yeah, okay, a UV bolt. It's just being a smart hiney now, I know. Well, it's got to be here. I have no idea. We don't know what it's called, but you know what it is. It's a bracket, a bolt, a something. It's a piece of hardware. Yes. Attaches a pole to something else. Okay. In this case, it happens to be the arm of a dish net. And we didn't actually have to drill a hole through the roof because, again, the dish net was here, so there was already a hole in the roof. So we were just making it just a little bit bigger, and, or bigger, not bigger, bigger. We'll try to get clearance for the coax because there was some uh, tar and stuff in there and we have some silicone sealant that we will put around it then and we will also make a moisture loop okay and basically the loop here is not as big as it looks it's just a and it doesn't have to be that big it's just this cable is really thick so um, we put it on there so that when it rains and the water runs it won't follow down into follow the coax down into um, the opening so it just helps a little and like I said we'll put a good silicone um, sealant around that okay so we brought the coax down through the roof or hey up underneath the roof decking and down and it goes into the wall with the other hangers i mean hangers antennas <laughs> a good inverter and you know you really don't need much more than that the inverter uses a lot of juice when you're plugging something in and batteries you know i researched i sent her uh, some some uh, specs and stuff on how this guy built his radio a uh, solar powered uh, uh generator using it for his radio over Oh, okay, we'll have to check that out. Um, you know, the other thing I was interested in, I think we saw at uh, a Hamcom, was the little, uh, like, go packs they built with the radio or the, the batteries and everything in there. I don't know if you remember seeing those, but I thought those were really cool. They came in the, uh, uh, whatever, I forget what those cases were called. It was the yellow Pelican case? Yeah, the Pelican cases. Uh, I thought that was really cool.